the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on working with breaks in Microsoft Word. Now, if you've ever struggled to get a long Word document to look exactly as you would like, it might be that you need to brush up on using breaks in your documents. Now, breaks allow you to split up your document into independent chunks. And what you can do is apply formatting or different layer options to just that specific chunk. And there are two types of breaks that you can add into a Word document. The first one is a page break and the second is a section break. So in this tutorial, I'm going to explore the usage of both of them. So let's start out by taking a look at page breaks. Now, by default, when you're working away in Word, Word automatically adds a page break when you get to the end of the page. However, you can insert a manual page break anytime you want and start a new page in your document. So, for example, if you were writing a book, you might say to yourself that you want to ensure that each new chapter starts on a new page. So in order to achieve that, you would need to insert a manual page break at the end of the chapter to ensure the new chapter starts at the top of a new blank page. So let's take a look at how page breaks work in this document that we've got on the screen. Now, this isn't a particularly long document. It's five pages or so. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to say that I want cast and characters, everything below that to be on a new blank page. So I can achieve that by inserting a manual page break. Now, as with most things in Word, there are numerous different ways that you can insert page breaks. So I'm going to show you all of them. The first thing you can do is make sure you have your cursor clicked where you want to add the page break. Jump up to the insert ribbon and you can see in this first group there is an option there for page break. The second way that you can do it is to go across to the layout ribbon. And underneath this breaks drop down, this is where you'll see all the different kinds of breaks that you can add. And this first group is the page breaks group and the top one is page break. The third way that you can add a page break in, and this is probably the, the method that I use most often simply because it's the quickest, is to use the shortcut key control enter, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. Control enter and it adds in a page break and pushes all of that text down onto the next page. Now, if I scroll up, just by looking at this document in its current state, you can't see that there is actually a manual page break in there. And sometimes it's super useful to be able to see where you have breaks throughout your document. Now, in order to be able to see those breaks, all you need to do is jump back to the home ribbon Go to your paragraph group and turn on your show hide markers. And you can see that as soon as I do that, I can now see that I have a page break just there. This is also particularly useful if you need to delete page or section breaks from your document, because in order to do that, you need to be able to see them. So make sure you turn on show hide. And if you need to delete this page break, all you would do is select it and press the delete key on your keyboard. Now, I'm actually going to put that back in, so control enter. So page breaks are fairly straightforward. Now, if we go back to layout and just jump back into breaks, you can see there are a couple of other options that we have in there. So one of them is a column break. So this is essentially if you are utilizing columns in your document. So let me show you how this works very quickly. I'm going to click at the top of my document. And I'm going to divide this into two columns, like so. Now, it might be on this second page that I decide I want to have a break, a page break, essentially, after this paragraph, House Lannister. But because I have my text in columns, what I would need to do would be to jump up to breaks and say I want to break the column like so. And again, if I want to see where that break is, I just need to turn on those show hide markers and you can see I have a column break.
Now I'm actually going to undo a few times just to come out of there because I don't want these in columns. Now the second type of break that you can add into a document is a section break. And again, if we jump up to this breaks option in our layout menu, you can see that we have four different types of section break. We have section break next page, which essentially works very similar to a page break. We have section break continuous, which allows you to insert a section break and start the new section on the same page. We have even page section breaks and odd page section breaks. So it really depends what type of section break you're looking for. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between a page break and a section break. Well, section breaks allow you to divide your document up into different sections. So currently I don't have any section breaks in this document. And if you look down in right in the bottom left hand corner, you can see here it's telling me that I have one section in my document. And it doesn't matter where I clicked in this document, it's going to say section one because I only have one section that spans multiple pages. Now the reason why you might want to divide your document up into different sections is if you want to do different things on different pages. For example, if I scroll up to uh, actually scroll down to this third page just here, what if I want this third page to be landscape? So currently everything is in the portrait orientation, but maybe I just want this one page, page three, to be landscape. Look what happens if I don't add in any section breaks. I'm clicked on page three. I'm going to go up to the layout ribbon. I'm going to go to orientation. I'm going to select landscape. But if I scroll up, you'll see that the entire document is now in landscape, which is not what I want. Now I'm going to undo and let's do that again. But this time we're going to add in section breaks. So what I want to do is essentially section off the page that I want to make landscape. So I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked at the top of the page before the first word. I'm going to go to breaks and I'm going to say section break continuous because I want to insert a section break and start the new section on the same page. So now that I've added that section break in, you'll notice that if I click in here, right in the bottom left hand corner, it now says I'm working in section two because there is a section break at the start of this page. If I was to scroll up and click on the page previously, you'll see that it's showing me that that is section one. So I have a section break at the beginning. And what I need to do is scroll down to the end of the page and add another section break at the end. So I'm going to go up to breaks, section break, continuous. So now if I go to the next page and click, you'll see that I'm in section three. If I click on this page, I'm in section two. And if I go back to that first page, that's now in section one. So what this means is that I can click in my section two. And now when I go to orientation and select landscape, the only page that's going to be landscape is that page that I've sectioned off. Another example of utilizing section breaks, if I come all the way out of here, is if I wanted to put just one page of text into columns. So again, I would click at the beginning of the page, go to break, insert section break continuous, and maybe I only want columns for this first couple of paragraphs. So I'm going to click at the end of this second paragraph. I'm going to go to breaks and say section break continuous. So now when I click in this first section, go to columns and say two, you can see that it's only put that first bit in that first section into columns and the rest of it is flowing across one column as normal. If I want to view where I have those section breaks back to home, turn on show hide and you can clearly see where I have that section break continuous. So it really does help you divide up your documents and get exactly the layout that you're looking for. So hopefully that's demystified how page breaks and section breaks work. There's so much that you can do with them. For example, you can utilize them for having different headers and footers on different pages. Sometimes sections works for that. You can have different margins on different pages, different page borders, page numbering, so on and so forth. So again, it's definitely worth creating a blank document, 
adding some text and then having a play around with section breaks and seeing how you can use them to format your document correctly. That's it on breaks. I hope that's been helpful to you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video tutorial. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.